Yeah, Russ has a funny story. Him and uh, him and James Hetfield got arrested in England when they were they were him and Russ Tippins from Satan and James and and Lars from Metallica. They climbed up on top of this marquee on top of this movie theater, and the cops came and they were drunk and and they broke it. They broke the marquee or something like that, and then the cops came and arrested them and. Uh, but only James and Russ got arrested. Lars ran away around the corner and he, he was mad. He managed to, he managed to escape, but those guys got arrested and um, um, somehow it worked out. But I think that was around the master. Of Welcome to Rock Talks. Today we are talking to Jarvis Lederby, singer and bass player of Night Demon. We discuss the new album Year of the Demon, his favorite British heavy metal albums, a very interesting story about Metallica being arrested during the Master of Puppets tour, and more. If you like this interview, please give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, and share the video with all your friends. Also, very important, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. By the way, if you see a little advertisement at the beginning, in the middle, or at the end of the video, please do not skip it. By doing that, you're helping me a lot. Come on, guys. It's just a few seconds of your life, and it will really make a difference for me. I'm counting on all of you. Enjoy the interview. Hi, I am uh, Jose Carlos. I'm here in Rock Talks. And um, I'm here with uh, Jarvis Leatherby, leader of the American heavy metal band Night Demon, bassist of Cyril and All, and founder of Iron Grip Management and Iron Grip Records. Uh, nice to meet you, Jarvis. And uh, first of all, I, I would like to talk about the next releases of, by Night Demon. Uh, one of these releases is a special compilation titled Year of the Demon via Century Media Records on March 25. And uh, the other release is a um, studio album with a scheduled release date of November 4, uh, 2000. Uh, regarding the compilation, please tell us uh, what songs would be included in the release and who are the special guests in uh, Year of the Demon. Yeah, so in 2020, uh, we released five seven inch singles. Uh, so the tracks were the song Empires Fall, Kill the Pain, Are You Out There, Visteria, and a cover of uh, Scorpions in Trance. Those were like the, the A sides, right? Mm -hmm. So all the songs came out digitally. They also came out on seven inch vinyl, like I mentioned. The seven inch vinyl that all the editions pretty much sold out the day they went on sale. So there were B-sides on these on these seven inches that were never really heard. We never streamed them or anything like that. And those were cover songs uh, by a band called La Griff. We did a song called Fast Bikes from La Griff. We did uh, Thin Lizzy's The Sun Goes Down. We did 100 Miles Per Hour by Sarah Thungle featuring Tim Baker from Sarah Thungle also doing vocals with me on that. And uh, a live version of Iron Maiden's Wasted Years. Um, and um, the fifth single that we put out was, was this cover of the Scorpions in trance and the B-side was Top of the Bill. And uh, both those songs were recorded from a live festival that we headlined in Germany. Um, and Uli John Roth from the Scorpions actually played those songs with us on stage on those recordings. So it's pretty cool, yeah. So, you know, these, these we didn't announce to anybody that we were doing any singles in 2020, but when the pandemic hit, we thought, well, we still have this plan, so let's roll it out. So we released the five singles every five weeks uh, from April to March of that year. And um, still, we have not had a chance to tour off those songs. So we thought it would be fitting, since people are still enjoying this stuff and haven't heard the B-sides, to just put it all on a compilation and have like a 10 song release. And that's what we get with this. That sounds great. Um, I wanna know uh, how did your love for heavy metal started? 
but specifically about the less popular bands. Uh, because, uh, for example, when I was a teenager in the 90s, I started listening to more popular bands like Iron Maiden, Angelus Priest, uh, Merciful Fate. And in the new century, um, I use uh, some download programs like Soulseek. And then I was able to discover uh, that endless paradise that is the new wave of British heavy metal, mm. like Satan, Holocaust, Angel Witch, Jaguar. In your case, how did that, that long and pleasant journey through the new wave of British heavy metal begin? You know, I think for me, like all roads lead back to like being a Metallica fan when I was young, you know, um, it's not, they, even though they were a very popular band back in the day, it's not like it was today. Like it was, it, you know, it was still, I would wear a Metallica shirt to school. You know, I grew up in the nineties too. So it's like, and, and I would kind of be like the, the road, the rebel a bit, you know, yeah. but all like, it was basically discovering all the bands that inspired them, you know? So I got into a lot of bands because of them um, and especially the new wave of British heavy metal. So when they would mention a band or I would read our interview, but they would mention somebody, I would have to go check it out. So this was before the internet was, there was music on the internet. And so when I would find stuff in record stores, I would just buy it and check it out and that's when i really understood i'm like yeah i know why these guys love this music so much it's fucking great you know uh it's really great and then of course with the with the uh progression of the internet then then it's just a, a bottomless uh well of just new old new old music you know that yeah. i'm still discovering i'm still discovering bands old bands that i never heard all the time you know, it's great. It's a, it's an awesome thing to have, you know? Yeah. And right now, if I ask you to make a top five of a new wave of British heavy metal albums, uh, which ones would you choose uh, right uh, now? Because it's, it's something that can change. <laughs> anytime. Yeah. 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 I, oh, I would say, I would say the first Iron Maiden, I would say Angel Witch self-titled uh, Diamond Heads, Lightning to the Nations, Jaguar Power Games, and well, it's, see, the last one's always hard to pick because you're going to leave some out, you know. Um, I really have to think about about that, but uh, it's tough to pick. The, it's tough to pick the last one, right? Because then I then I know that I have no more choices. Those first four I mentioned are are definitely up there with among among my my, my favorites as far as like album you know because see there's there's tons of great new ever, uh, british heavy metal songs and eps or singles but for full albums those four i mentioned were amazing so for the fifth one i would probably have to say uh demons uninvited guest oh right that was you know right but i also like the first record and you know i don't know dark star uh that that yeah uh, see here i go yeah i give you my five that's it that's my five. Yeah. <laughs> well, one of the EPs I love is uh, "We Stand to Fight" uh, by Virtue. Uh, oh yeah, Virtue. So yeah. Sad, uh, we ha we don't have uh, an album by Virtue. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Would be great no, that's a great see, yeah. uh, that band releasing an album or seeing in a show. That would be great. But at the same time, what what we have by them is is amazing. Yeah. Right. So like they they never really made any mistakes. You know, yeah. uh, there's many bands, there's so many bands like that. Crucifixion, you know, uh, I, I could go on and on. Aragorn, you know, there's so many bands from that scene that the quick stuff, you know, like just yeah. the the singles, like like, like Le Griff. I don't know if you've ever heard Le Griff, but that's like where we covered the song Fast Bikes yeah, I saw, I saw um, on one of these singles. Yeah. And like, it's like nobody even knows who that band is. So I'm glad that we're we're showcasing them and spreading a little bit of love and a little bit of knowledge about them, you know? Yeah. So uh, could you recommend a few rare new wave of British heavy metal albums? Yeah, well, okay, the Dark Star record that I mentioned, uh, you know, I mean, ama amazing record, you know, they have a second album too, but it's, it's not as good. But that first Dark Star, I mean, it's incredible, like with Lady of Mars on it, Captain America, um, there's, a song, there's a song called Green Peace on there. I, there's, I, I can't recommend that one enough, that Dark Star record. Um, 
that that's a very underground record. Um, Gaskin is a really underrated band. They've got some pretty good rocking songs. Um, I guess the Wishfinder General albums. I know, I know. I think a lot of people know about that now. You know, a lot of people know about that. Um, there's actually a record that I want to mention, and it's it's a Praying Mantis album. It's a live record um, that was recorded in '95, I think, alive in Tokyo, and it's actually it's just Praying Mantis, but it's got. It's got the two guy, original guys, the two brothers, the guitar player and the bass player, but it's got it's got um, Dennis Stratton from Iron Maiden on second guitar, Clive Burr from Iron Maiden on drums. Oh, wow! And yeah, and it's 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 a, and it's got Gary Barden from Michael Shanker on vocals, and I'm like, it's almost like a new wave of British heavy metal supergroup, and yeah. they're playing these songs, and you realize like how great these Praying Mantis songs really are, you know. Um, but I would recommend just a lot, you know, a lot of the a lot of the new wave of British heavy metal singles, you know, like a lot of people haven't heard that. Um, I think like, uh, you know, Def Le early Def Leppard on through the night, stuff like that. People should really get into if they haven't heard it, because most people would ca categorize put Def Leppard in a different category. But until you hear that record, then you can really understand kind of where that band came from and how and how good they really were back then, you know, Um what else? I mean, you know, it's just, it's so hard to say. There's so, there's so much good, there's so much good stuff in that, in that, in that subgenre of metal. I mean, I almost like all of it that came out, you know, even though the band sounded a lot different from each other too. I still, I, I pretty much like, like everything that's, that, that happened around that time, you know? Yeah. And how, how did you approach the transition from being just a heavy metal fan to being a heavy metal musician and founder of uh, Iron Grip Records and management? How, how, was that? how was that? I don't know. I mean, I, I'm still a fan, you know, I'm still a fan. And I think it's like with the, I'm a fan of the music that I make too, you know, and like, I, I just, I think I'm such a big fan of metal that, I kind of started a band because I wanted to make the music that I wanted my favorite bands to play, you know, and not, not all of them play like that anymore, you know? So, um, and on the bands that I manage, I mean, I just big fans of theirs and I, I, I'm there because I'm able to help them in a way and help them navigate their career because I, you know, know certain things in the music industry and that's the business that I'm in. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm a good protector of bands like that, you know, um, and I look at it as a fan. I mean, I'm always when I'm when I'm making decisions for bands or, or guiding their career in any way, I'm always even my own band. Like I'm thinking about it from a fan's perspective, always like, well, hold on, you know, this may be a good decision financially, but in the long run, is it a good decision for the fans? No, if it's not, we don't do that, you know. You always got to think from the fans perspective and you have to think in the, in the long game, you know? So I think things just happen gradually. You know, it wasn't overnight that all of this stuff happened for me. I, it started, it started very slowly and just every day kind of increases a little bit, you know? Yes. Um, what, what you're doing with Iron Grip is it's great because uh, Thank you. old fans like Jaguar or Satan, I think uh, they are bands that need more attention because they are great and great bands. We're so. trying to do that, you know, um, a little, little by little, you know, but uh, I think, you know, we all appreciate the fans that we actually do have. And we're, we get out there and, 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 and service the people that do like the bands currently and have for decades. And I think that's a really important thing. You know, it's not so much about, um, the masses it's about like when you have people all around the world that really because the band the people that love these bands they really love these bands they're not just casual fans they really love these bands so um it's always our goal to to give them you know the best the best that we can you know like keep making new records and keeping the bands on tour and playing festivals and stuff and so there's a lot of good stuff coming up yes well, one of, of the ones i love is uh, satan I remember uh, I traveled to another country to see uh, Satan. I think I traveled to Chile 
because uh, at that time they played uh, Court in the Act in its entirety. Right. I was mm -hmm. so happy and I, I was in the backstage with all my vinyls, my CDs. So yes, it's it's a special. They, they have a new album. They have a new album being announced tomorrow, actually. Yeah. So, yeah. So I mean, that's the other thing too. I mean, they're still writing songs at a high level. You have all five original members from that 1983 Court in the Act era. And I mean, who can say that? You know, and I think that that band is writing better albums today than a lot of bands that have been yeah. around that long. Well, agree. That, yeah, agree. and and it's 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 an honor and a privilege for me to be able to to be steering the ship, so to speak. You know, for for those guys, and um, it's a really it's a trippy thing to think about sometimes. But but it's a it's really it's really cool, and and uh, you know, obviously they have a lot of reach all over the world. You know, so. But it's like, like I said, it's not just about that classic album. It's about th they're soon going to be releasing their fourth album since their reunion, and in the from the last decade, and they've they're insanely good. Like the the songwriting is off the charts. It's it's very impressive, and that's that's kind of what I'm here to help do. You know, is to help them have that kind of exposure. You know, and not just be a band of the past. Because they're not, they're, they're still here, you know? Yeah. So probably Satan is my favorite heavy metal band right now. About old school heavy metal. It's actually, I, I, I would put, I should actually say Court and the Act is probably my fifth favorite in that five, top five. Yeah. It's funny, I don't even think about my own bands when I'm like naming that stuff, you know? But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I remember some some people say that Court in the Act is like a British Kill em All uh, because <laughs> I think, uh, it, it was released the same year of Kill em All. So, yeah. uh, do you think the same? It's like a British Kill em All. Uh, this no. Court in the Act. No, I, I think I think those albums are two different albums completely. You know, uh, but but you know they those 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 bands were friends. You know, they knew each other. Uh, yeah, Russ has a funny story. Him and uh, him and James Hetfield got arrested in England when they were they were him Russ Tippins from Satan and James and and Lars from Metallica. They climbed up on top of this marquee on top of this movie theater, and the cops came and they were drunk and and they broke it. They broke the marquee or something like that, and then the cops came and arrested them and. Uh, but only James and Russ got arrested. Lars ran away around the corner, and he he was man. He managed to he managed to escape. But those guys got arrested, and um, um, somehow it worked out. But I think that was around the Master of Puppets days, um, or in, a little uh, around that time. I believe. I believe. Um, I wasn't there, but uh, but yeah, those. You know, obviously the two bands know each other and they're friends and and especially around that time, you know, had 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 been involved with each other um, in the scene, you know, and had a mutual respect for each other. But I think they're two completely different beasts. You know, I think that in my life, the albums are equally important, you know, um, you know, 83 was a great year for heavy metal, man. You know, yeah, I think every year from 77 to 87 was a great year for heavy metal you know yeah <laughs> like yeah uh but you know i digress yeah so um i want to talk about the next studio album by night demon um, uh -huh. um what what sounds are you incorporating in in the next uh night demon studio album how, how will it differ from previous uh, night demon albums well, it's definitely more of a progression for the band. I think we're experimenting with um, not so many different sounds, but different arrangements. I think it's the songs that we're writing are a little bit more progressive, but they still they're still catchy. They still have hooks. They still it's you can still sing along to them. You know, they're not so far out there. But I think you know we're we're only three guys, and we've always we've always seen ourselves as more of uh 
little like a, farther away from Motorhead as far as our we use we we use a lot more musicianship in a way. Yeah. But 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 also far enough away from Rush where we're not so progressively odd or strange to the ear sometimes, you know? I mean, those are two of the greatest three-piece bands of all time. So I'm not I'm not trying to I'm saying we're neither of those. We're somewhere in the middle of those on this next record. You know, we're somewhere in the middle of those two bands. I think that we, we've done a really good job of being three guys and sounding bigger than three guys and doing a lot of things that, you know, on the, on the albums, we, we rarely don't have get, even rhythm guitar tracks. It's just the three, you know? So we really fill that out live as well. And, and now I think we're just, we're trying to incorporate more innovation with three piece, with a three piece band, you know, with, with one guitar, one bass and some drums, you know? So I think on the next record, you, you're going to hear a lot of that. Yeah, it sounds great. Um, um, I, I want to talk about Life Darkness, uh, no? the songs recorded from the studio album were enhanced, I think with extra power on the live recording. It's it's the same feeling um, I have when I listen to Life After Death compared to the songs from Peace of Mind. Absolutely, of the, yeah. Uh, will you somehow try to recreate the live vibe and sound on the next studio album? It's hard to do. You know, every band says that they want to make a record that sounds like them live. It it, it always happens, but it just it just you can't. You know, I mean, one thing that we did, the music, the music sections are already done for the new album. And we did record everything live in the in a room together, which is great, you know, but. Um, it's just a, it's a totally different energy when there's people there, you know, and you're in a room, it sounds different. You know, I mean, it's a, it's a it's a totally different energy. It's, a, it's but I agree with you. I mean, the first Iron Maiden I ever bought was Life After Death. And I was like, holy shit, it changed my life. Like, it yeah. was so incredible. Like, I, it was, I remember the day it happened, you know? And like, I, I, re I remember it like it was yesterday. It wasn't yesterday, but, <laughs> uh, you know, and I just, I, I fell in love with the live album with that, you know, that and Metallica's Binge and Purge, you know, I just, I fell in love with the live album because of that. And then came Unleashed in the East for me and ACDC Live. And I just, I love, I love live albums. And that's why I was glad that we were able to do such a great, such a good one and really capture the spirit of the band and the audience. Um, I loved that. So I, I really, um, You know, if we, if you can't if you can't re, if you can't sound like a live band in the studio, then make a live album. That's what we did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, now I I, I want to talk again about the latest album released by old school heavy metal bands. For example, in my case, I like the the last album of Iron Maiden, Sinjutsu. Uh, I thought it, it was better than the previous one. Uh, however, I feel that some songs are, it's my opinion, because <laughs> what, what I will say right now is maybe like a, some kind of sacrilege. Uh, some, some, songs, some songs are thing, I think are unnecessarily long. Um, I think being a slightly shorter album would be a better approach, I think. And, and I feel the same with the, la the, the, with the last Halloween album. It's a good album, I think, but some songs are too long, I think. Um, uh, do you feel like suddenly the need for more streams on Spotify and other streaming services is negatively impacted on some metal releases as a whole? Uh, do you think that's a problem? Oh, I don't know. Maybe hold, you hold on. I, I, I didn't understand the question. You. So is this regarding the length of songs? Yeah, yeah. Ask, ask me one more time the question, just the question directly. Yeah, so uh, I think um, in, in the latest uh, Iron Maiden and Halloween albums. Yeah, no, I understood that part. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But what's the yeah. question to me? Do I think what? Um, 
that uh, maybe these uh, streaming services uh, are the reason uh -huh. for that length of the albums? Uh, uh, no, no, I don't think so at all. I don't think so. I mean, I don't think that listening to a song longer gets you more streams, right? Okay. I would think the more songs with the less amount of time would get you more streams, you know, because they're actually listening to more songs. I think you might have to listen to a song for over a minute or a minute and a half to, to get the stream to count it, you know? I believe that's the case. Um, I, I'm not sure, but I, I believe that is the case. Something like that. Um, I don't think that, that these bands care about the streaming services. I don't think they give a shit, you know, especially the old school bands. They yeah. could really care less, especially the old school bands that are successful. I mean, it's just going to happen, you know, like they Iron Maiden has found a really good way to target people who download their music and go play concerts for them. You know, and that's that's they were smart about that. You know, um, Metallica owns their own their masters back. So all the streaming money goes to them. You know, a lot of a lot of artists complain that there's no that there's no money in streaming. I mean, it's it's not as much as selling a traditional, you know, physical album, but, you know, also when you're selling a traditional physical album, you're having to pay to manufacture it. You're having to pay to advertise it. You have to distribute it. You know, there's shipping, there's all kinds, there's, there's a lot involved, you know? So with the digital streaming thing, if you own the rights to the song, to the master recording, there's some money in it. People make money and Metallica streamed over one, billion streams in 2021 one billion okay and absolutely incredible you know and they they didn't have to do anything for that they didn't have to go produce physical records and ship them to a store and pay for co-op advertising with that store or or you know and they didn't i mean they of course they did some advertising and yes they still do make physical out copies and sell them but streaming can be a thing for some bands that it's just a free gift sometimes because people are it's either that and get paid something for it or just have people illegally download it for nothing and which which was happening for a long time you know so um look i just feel like we need to evolve with technology and embrace it and it, it could be a, a, the fact that i'm in i'm actually from california I'm in, I'm actually in Northern Ireland right now and you're in Peru and we're able to see each other and talk. Yeah. This was like when I saw the movie Total Recall, like in the early nineties, I went to the movie theater, the Schwarzenegger movie, and they were talking on a screen that was this yeah. big, like on the phone. And I was like, my mind was blown. I was like, holy fuck. Imagine if we could do that one day. I'm like, here we are, you know? So but I like, I obviously, you know, that I'm a big fan, especially, you know, Night Demon makes cassettes. We make vinyl like up all the time. We make, we make CDs, CDs sell great for us. We stream too, though. I think any format that somebody wants to listen to music is fine. And I, as an artist, it's good to be on all formats. If somebody listens to something on a fucking bottle of water, we'll, we'll make it, you know, it's like, I, I think that's cool, but you know, uh, in regards to longer songs, I mean, I don't want to criticize anybody who whose songs are too long. But there's a lot, in my opinion, like, you, like not that my opinion matters, but I would, but I do agree with you that, like, I personally don't care too much for songs that are long that don't go anywhere. Okay. I'll say that much, you know, like if a song is just repeating itself all the time for 10 minutes, like I, it, I lose interest, you know, yeah. but that's why I started my own band, you know, and Night Demon songs are three minutes long, you know, they're three minutes long. Some are four, four and a half, but that's a long song for us, man, you know, yeah. so and if it's longer, we take it somewhere. It goes through a journey. It's not just repeating itself you know and and i don't know we have shorter attention spans these days right so yeah i think i think older guys if they're smart especially successful older people right think about some of like 
like the bigger metal artists that have been around for 40 or 50 years that have never been on social media probably ever in their lives. They're like, yeah, that's not for me. I don't care. They haven't had to deal with all the bullshit that we thought was cool and now is like hurting us, you know? They still have the patience in their life. They're like, they probably read books every day or like go and hang out with their family and like, you know, go for walks, play their instrument. You know what I'm saying? Have a hobby woodworking who knows you know but like it's like they never had to fall into that trap you know so like their attention spans are pretty much still intact so to them writing a 10 minute song is probably feels good you know it's probably normal it's like all right i you know i'm 60 years old and i still have the stamina to do this and i have a mind that's like i'm gonna write a song about it's a book i just read you know it's like so I think we need to look at it in that way too. I think a lot of times we're really critical, we're a little overly critical on our heroes because we expect so much out of them. But you gotta understand, these guys are, if somebody judged my whole career on the things I did between age 18 to 21, you know, I mean, I wouldn't even have a career, <laughs> you know, like I, I, I feel like it's, 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 that's what happens to a lot of these guys. You know, we're always looking at what they did when they were like an, at an age where they didn't even really know who they were as people. And, you know, obviously great things happen, you know, and, but they're having to go out there and play that they every day for the rest of their lives. Like they, they're constantly, their work has to live up to what they did before they were even fully developed as human beings, <laughs> you know? So it's a tough thing, man. And I just, I respect the shit out of bands who still do it and still go out there. And, you know, as long as they're enjoying it, you know, obviously somebody's enjoying it. People still keep coming to the, to the gigs. Right. You know? Yeah. So anyway, I'm sorry. That was a long answer. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. Uh, well, um, the last question, uh, is there any possibility of a Latin American tour soon in the next future, near future? You know, yeah, well, with this, with this uh, pandemic, obviously everything keeps getting pushed back and back and back. So in 2020, we didn't have a Latin American tour scheduled. It was supposed to happen in 2021, right? So right now, in 2022, we're reliving 2020. Right. Does that make sense? So, so I look for us in, look for us to be down there in your summertime next year. So our winter time, like, you know, January, February, um, 2023 is the plan for us to get back down there. We, we have to get the amount of requests <laughs> that we get to come back to, to Mexico, Central America, South America is incredible. Like it's more than anywhere and it's constant, you know? So I, I know you guys are hurting for some, for, for a good time, you know? <laughs> so uh, we're, we're ready, man. And so I, so basically one year from now, but we'll have a lot of new music to play for you, you know, and uh, we'll be ready to go. Well, thank you very much, Jarvis. It was a great interview. Did you comment on my uh, background, by the way? My, uh, these are, uh, this is how much more heavy metal can you get than this? Yeah. These are uh, huge uh, pyramid spikes. It looks great. Right? It's it, looks great. Like, it looks like a Rob Halford yeah. wall. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, <heavy. laughs> thank you very much, Jarvis. Hope to see Jose, you. Jose, thank you, man. You're the awesome. Right. Keep it real out there, okay? Yeah. See you later. Thank you. Bye. All right, man. If you like this interview, please give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, and share the video with all your friends. Also, very important, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell.